Welcome to the Applied Biosystems Tech Talk video series, where we break down real-time PCR to make it easier for you. For many years, Applied Biosystems TACMAN chemistry has been the gold standard for real-time PCR applications, like gene expression, microRNA analysis, and genotyping. But if you're unfamiliar with the technology, you may have some probing questions about how TACMAN assays work. I'll talk you through the basics. Like any PCR, TACMAN assay reactions require a double-stranded template as well as two standard target-specific primers. While two primers are all you need for regular PCR, real-time PCR with TACMAN chemistry requires one or more sequence-specific oligos called probes. Probes are quite different from primers in two ways. First, they cannot be extended by our friend TAC polymerase, since they lack free hydroxyl groups. What's more, TACMAN probes are covalently joined to two other molecules. On the 5' prime end, there's a fluorescent molecule known as a reporter. I call it that because it reports a signal to us as we generate more and more product. On the 3' prime end is a molecule known as a quencher, which quenches the fluorescent signal from the reporter under certain circumstances. Well, let's see what those circumstances are. Here we're looking at an intact probe with the reporter in green and the quencher in red. Normally, when we zap the probe with light, we expect the reporter to get excited and fluoresce. Because the quencher is in close proximity to the reporter, what happens instead is this. The energy gets transferred from the reporter to the quencher. This phenomenon is known as FRET, or Fluorescence Resonance Energy Transfer. The important thing to note here is that as long as the probe remains intact, there is no permanent increase in the fluorescence signal from the reporter. However, if the reporter and quencher are permanently separated during the reaction, the reporter fluoresces when light strikes it. This produces a signal that the instrument can detect. The basic idea, then, is that each time we create a new PCR amplicon, we want to permanently separate the reporter and quencher. By doing so, fluorescence will always increase proportionally with the product, which allows us to effectively monitor what's happening in our reactions throughout the run. Well, here it is in action. We begin our reactions by denaturing our template at a high temperature. As we lower the temperature, our probe and primers bind to specific sequences in the template. TAC now comes in, finds the primers, and begins the PCR extension phase by building new complementary strands of DNA. But wait a second, there's a probe sitting in the way. What will the polymerase do? Will it completely stop? Will it turn around and go back where it came from? Nope, not TAC polymerase. You see, our enzyme has what's referred to as 5' prime exonuclease activity, meaning that it pretty much eats DNA for lunch. So when TAC reaches a probe, it simply chews it to bits on its way to creating a new amplicon. As a result, the reporter and quencher are physically separated. This leads to a permanent increase in fluorescence that, not coincidentally, perfectly accords with our doubling of product. And of course, our real-time instrument can monitor and record this increase in fluorescence after each cycle, generating an amplification plot that's more than a little useful for interpreting our data. Now that you've learned the basics of TACMAN assays, you're primed for your next qPCR experiment. Thanks for watching. Check out more applied biosystems TACTALK videos on our website at thermofisher.com slash TACTALK. <laughs>